All right, so today we're going to take a look at what it takes to rebuild a side shift cylinder for a forklift. So this is a fairly small machine. It's uh, 5,000 pounds. So basically, to take it off, you'll kind of lift the uh, side shift up to a, a good working height for you to work on it, right? So then you'll have to pop out the pins. There'll be a pin on each end on this. And I had to do a bit of finagling to uh, twist uh, things and get the space to get it out of there. But it worked out pretty good. Side shifts are kind of like an aftermarket part on a lot of forklifts. So like if you inspect it carefully, you might figure out who made it. Like the uh, clamps on here say LTA on it, which didn't really get me anywhere. There's some uh, wear pieces in here. You can take a look at them and see what you can figure out. And then uh, there's actually a nameplate on this side shift. So it's just made by some small welding outfit in Ontario and they don't sell parts. They may not even exist anymore. All I figured out was that the address on the nameplate is a welding shop and it's been historically a welding shop for decades. So anyway, once you get the uh, cylinder off, which isn't very hard to do, you'll have to uh, take it apart. So this one is already apart. And uh, because it's a small outfit that provided it, it's sort of, there's no uh, parts list available for it. So uh, to get it out, what I found was that like, uh, this is what you're gonna be facing with. So the first thing you'll do is remove this little snap ring. And that will allow you to push this piece in. And when you push it in about a half an inch, you'll get access to this ring here. And you have to stick a screwdriver in there and pop it out. And at that point, you'll be able to uh, withdraw the entire uh, cylinder or piston system that's out of the cylinder. So like I said, you'll use uh, probably a, a hammer and tap this in about a half an inch. So you get that ring out and then you can start to pull this out which will have the uh, the piston end on it, right? But I found that a four pound hammer was too much. So what I did was I hung the cylinder just off of here and just kind of tapped on it until I was able to get things apart. So uh, the, with the four pound hammer, it was actually getting the uh, this piece cocked in the cylinder and it was kind of difficult to remove. So after I got it all apart, I just took it into a, a, a hydraulic shop that deals with Parker parts. So if you can find a place that does Parker, they can size up the parts for you. So they charged me a uh, hundred bucks. So they charged me like 50 bucks in parts and then 50 bucks in labor just to size it up. And also they, they put it together for me. I thought I was just gonna get the parts given to me. And they uh, machined this opening here to get the seal to go in nicely. Because like this welding here, so when you bottom out the cylinder, that weld was uh, smashing in here and making it kind of difficult for them to put together. So for 50 bucks, they put it in a lathe and tuned it up for me, which is great. There's really only two parts in here. There's just the uh, the wiper here, and then there's a seal inside. It looks like they put some lubricant on it already. You can put some oil or some Parker O-ring lubricant. Then on the piston, there's just uh, one seal and then two these rings to go on here. So to rebuild this thing, you need one, two, three, four, five parts. And then there's another O-ring in the backer here. So anyway, there's quite a few parts and for 50 bucks they measure it and give you the parts so that's that's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I'm not really going to show putting it back together. But I will say like this lip here, it's kind of it's beveled to put the cylinder in but when coming out it's a very square lip to hold this uh, ring from sliding out. So that's really going to be difficult to get this out without damaging it. So all I really need was the two parts here, but I damaged everything else just trying to get it out of there. 
So plan to have a little bit of downtime until you get the parts so you get them from Parker. And then uh, when you're looking at a cylinder where there's an attachment on the end of the rod, you can pretty much anticipate there's going to be a nut on the other end. Whereas like if you look at uh, these tilt cylinders, you can just take that part off and slide everything out. So that can kind of give you an idea whether you're going to have a, a fight with a big fastener on the inside. And then with these as well, with the uh, tilt cylinders, I should have brought both of these caps in and had them uh, machined on a to make it easier to put the seals in because they're quite smashed. Like every time you pull the uh, mast back, it smashes these parts into the uh, glands and it just damages the, uh, the space. So that was a, a bit of a nuisance. So I think that's all I'm going to show with this one. I'm not going to show any working on it because like I think just knowing how it's assembled is all you need to know. You can figure out the rest. So thank you for watching.